learning outcome. After studying this module, you shall be able to know what is chain of custody, importance of chain of custody, and the steps involved in chain of custody. Introduction. Today we are more aware about the necessity to shield the integrity of the evidence as unique sensitivity and ability of the DNA technique to identify the specific human source from trace quantity of blood evidence indistinguishable to the human eye. Juror and defendants have a right to expect that police and prosecutor will protect the reliability of the evidence during their possession, custody or control. Defense counsel has a obligation towards their client to scrutinize the evidence before trial and review all of the documentation regarding who handled it and where it has been since it, have, it was seized. Now, what is chain of custody? Chain of custody is legally refers to the chronological documentation or paper trial showing the seizure, custody, control, transfer, analysis and deposition of physical or electronic evidences. Now, chain of custody is a familiar concept nowadays, very significant part of criminal proceedings, but until recent years it was foreign to civil litigators. In the context of criminal law, police seizures evidence seal in a plastic bag on the spot, label it and sign it in to a locked evidence room. The chain of custody starts with the original discoverer at the crime scene. Evidence should not be disturbed before its proper documentation and retrieval at the scene of crime. If it is moved prior to the documentation and if all the facts related with what moment are not documented completely in the form of notes, sketches and photographs, then the chain of custody has been broken and a court may subsequently rule that the evidence is tainted and inadmissible. Now, the importance of chain of custody. Importance of the most neglected but significant issue in any trial of an investigation is whether the evidence is presented by the prosecution to support its case is in the same condition as it was seized by police from crime scene. Now, the integrity of the evidence has been important to create and sustain the legitimacy and confidence in the ability of a formal dispute resolution process. Ever since people began to settle in permanent communities along riverbanks and support themselves year around by fishing in the rivers and growing crops in the fertile soil close to the river banks. Whenever any crime takes place, its proceeding takes place in the court. The primary purpose for the evidence recovery technician or crime scene investigator to recognize, collect and mark the evidence items so that the same items may be able to identify those items later on. The tagging, labeling and marking the evidences adds to the credibility and control to our ability to identify the item, the evidence collected for the case, which are subjected to caution about it maintenance of chain of custody properly. A written chronological record needs to be prepared of each person processing items of evidence. The prosecution must account for evidences along every step of the way from its discovery to its collection, to its packaging, to its analysis, to its storage, to its transfer. Throughout the entire process, including court proceedings and appeals, the prosecution have a responsibility to maintain secure positions of the evidence. It is also defined as chain of custody is a legal term that lawyers and judges uses to describe the record keeping trial for the crime scene and the medical examiner's office where most evidence exhibits are collected. To the case property room at the law enforcement agency offices to the crime laboratories 
for testing the analysis and back to the property room where it will be stored until needed for a trial. Now these steps involved in chain of custody. First step is the evidences should collected from the crime scene or the medical examiner's office. Second, after documentation sent to the case property room with the law enforcement agency, next to the chief judicial magistrate, then next to the forensic science laboratory, next to the case property room of FSL, next after testing and analysis at FSL reports sent to the court. Now the next process is the remaining part of the evidence sent back to the case property room with the law enforcement agency. Now it serves two major purposes if carried out properly. First it forms a receipt of who had it when who had it next. This is the usual and conventional notation of the chain of custody. If it is done properly at the most it ensures that the sample collected was the one actually analyzed if all the people involved are to be believed. It does not necessarily mean lack of assess by others. The chain of custody is also part of the reason why, when possible, evidence is sent in large piece with identifiable marks directly on it, such as the collector's either name or initials with details about date and other things, rather than removing cutting a smaller portion that cannot be labeled individually. The case identifier and other pentiners informations listed on packaging materials holding the evidence provide yet another means to try to document the chain of custody. Chain of custody is preserved by marking certain the investigators note completely and documents everything that happened to each sample of evidence at the scene. A chain of custody form should be attached to each evidence container. Failure at any stage to document properly leads to subsequent exclusion at the trial of one and the one possessing that evidence will be held responsible because every person who handles the evidence has duty to demonstrate the unbroken chain of custody. It is the best practice to keep the number of individuals who handle the evidence to the minimum. The chain of custody is required to be provided when the evidence that is being looked for to be introduced at trial or where the relevance of the evidence depends on its analysis after seizure. A proper chain of custody requires three types of proof. First is the proof that a piece of evidence is what it implies to be, for example, a complainant's blood sample. Now the second point is proof of continuous possessions by each individual who has been involved in possessing the evidence since the time of seizure until its presentation in court. And the third point is the testimony given by each person who was involved in the possession of evidences that the particular piece of evidence remained in subsequently the same condition for the moment one person took possession of evidences till the moment that people handed over the evidences into the custody of another. For example, proof that the evidences was stored in such a safe location where no one else had access to it. Now providing chain of custody, it is necessary to lay a foundation for the evidence in question by showing the absence of alterations, substitutions or change of condition, specifically foundation testimony of concrete evidence that requires exhibits to be identified as being in substantially the same condition as they were at the time of seizure from the crime scene and further the exhibit has remained in the same condition through an unbroken chain of custody. For example, suppose that in a prosecution for possession of illegal narcotics, police personnel A recovers drugs from the defendant A gives to the police officer B to the drug, B then gives the drugs to the scientist C who conducts the an analysis of the drugs, C gives the drugs to police detective D who brings the drugs to the court. The testimony of A, B, C and D constitute a chain of custody for the possession of drug sample and the prosecution would need to offer proof by each person in the chain to establish both the condition and identification of that evidence unless the defendant 
stipulated as to the chain of custody in order to save time. Now, methodology followed during chain of custody. Whether the necessary groundwork has been done to establish chain of custody for an exhibit is a matter of trial judge discretion. Possibilities of wrong identification and an adulteration must be eliminated if not absolutely but as the matter of responsible probability where there is sufficient proof that the evidence is what it purports to be and that testimony is offered by each and every responsible person involved in the chain of custody discrepancies as to accuracy or reliabilities of testimony regarding the chain of custody go to the weight of the evidence and not to any admissibility meaning that the evidence would be admitted into the record for the judge or jury to evaluate in light of any conflicting testimony that the chain of custody in some way had been compromised. While the party who offers the evidence has the onus of demonstrating the chain of custody, the party against whom the evidence is offered must raise timely object to the evidence when it is first introduced at trial or the party will waive any objections to its integrity based on a compromised chain of custody. The conversion of evidence from paper to an electronic format enforces new requirements until the civil legations to ensure the proper chain of custody is maintained. With a properly established chain of custody, you become confident that the evidence will be given its proper weight and consideration by the jury. Now that civil legations must be equally cognizant of the necessity of maintaining a proper chain of custody to ensure its admissibility, one must make a critical decision regarding who will be charged with responsibility for the collection of data and preservation as well as the type of methodology will be used. Clearly, these decisions should be made in well-informed fashions and should complement the potential need for the electronic evidence service provider. Now the first step is develop key control points. In this, after reviewing the manufacturing process, understand each production stage properly where products are joined together. In this, the second point is identify key control points wherever there is a combination of products. Now the second step is to identify material with a uniform marking system. In this, the first point is to identify all certified and non-certified components. Second point, the marking system must be clear throughout every product delivered. Now, the step three, use a standard system to maintain records and documents. In this, maintain detailed records down to a lot, batch, minute and second of the manufacturing process. Now, the step four. Assign responsibilities, accountability, and authority with assurance of compliance. In this, the organizations can anticipate large investments in a system and people with the responsibilities, accountabilities, and authority for the design. Second point, the implementation of chain of custody. Now, the step five, set up rigorous internal and external audits to obtain compliance and process integrity. In this, the first point is, the chain of custody is a kind of insurance. Most of the time, the systems are not required. The second point is, there are no regulatory pressures for compliance, which increases the chance of procedures won't always be pursued thoroughly. The third point is, there is a need to put some mechanisms in place to keep the chain of custody reliability intact so that it works when it has to. Now the step six, integrate chain of custody through the supply chain. In this, the liability lies with the supply managers to integrate internal chain of custody with supplies coming upstream to them and the requirements of demanding customers. Now the chain of custody of the evidentiary materials was hardly an issue with civil ligations, but with the intent of the digital age, it has become a major issue because the actual nature of evidence in civil ligation has undergone a drastic transformation from tangible paper to electronic data. Electronic data as evidence is much more difficult to handle 
then it is to sign in tangible narcotics seized at the time of arrest and sign them out against the time of trial. That is because electronically discovery is a multi-state process and custody is an issue of all that stage. In this particular figure, you can see the planning in this. We should prepare, impact, classify, risk. Now the second forensic services, notification escalations in this policies, identify, verify, recovery and in integration reporting. These are the process of proactive, reactive and maturity. Now the stages involved in the electronic evidence analysis. The generally accepted stages of electronic discovery are as follows. First is the identification, next preservation, next is collection, next is processing, next is to review, next is to analysis, next is to production and finally the presentation as evidence during trial. The requirement to maintain the chain of custody applies to all stages of the electronic discovery process. As the discovery process has to say many steps, the chain of custody can be very long and complicated. Often the chain of custody for digital information involves documenting the methodology used in the forensic acquisitions of electronically stored information ESI contained on storage media like hard drive and the chain of custody of the ESI during and after retrieval process. The foundation for admissibility of ESI may be attacked by objecting to either prong of the process. Now there is a sample form which has been attached for ready reference. In this the police evidence chain of custody tracking form is there. In this you can see the case number, offenses, submission officer, name, victim, suspect, date and time, seized, location of seizure. Now you can see description of evidence form. In this the first block is there of item, second block is of quantity and the third block is of description of items like serial number, model, condition, marks, scratches. Now there is a form of chain of custody. Now in this you can see the first block is of item, second is of date or time, the third block is of released by, in this you can see the signature or ID of that person. Now this next block is received by, in this you can see the signature and ID of that person and the next block is the comments and the location from where it was formed. Now the evidence chain of custody tracking form. In this the first block is of item, second block is of date or time in which that item was taken, released by is the signature and the ID of that person who has released it. Now the next block is received by, this, in this the signature and the ID of that person who has received it is there. And the next block is comments and location if there is any comment or location provided by that released or received person. Now the final disposal authority form. In this the authorization for disposal items and this is written to the owner. The next option is for auction, destroy or divert name and ID of the authorizing officer. Next option is for the signature and next is date witness to the description of evidence items. Next in this name and ID of witness to destruction his signature and date. Release to lawful owners in this the item number, ID number, name, address, state, telephone number, zip code, city are written. This evidence chain of custody form is to be retained as a permanent record by the anywhere police department. Now this summary, chain of custody is legally refers to the chronological documentation of paper trial showing the seizure, custody, control, transfer, analysis and deposition of physical or electronic evidences. Now the evidence should not be disturbed before its proper documentation and retrieval at the scene of crime. Next point is primary purpose for the evidence recovery technician or crime scene investigator to recognize collect and mark the evidence items so that the 
same item may be able to identify those items later on. Next point is the written chronological record needs to be prepared of each person possessing items of evidence. The chain of custody is required to be provided when the evidence that is being looked for to be introduced at trial or where the relevance of evidence depends on its analysis after seizure. Next point, one must make a critical decision regarding who will be charged with responsibility for the collection of data and preservation as well as what type of methodology will be used. Thank you.